the Holy Spirit has put in my heart um, to clarify what what um, what the meaning is of not trusting in man. In Jeremiah, God said, "Curses anyone who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, whose heart departeth away from the Lord." And what that means is, curses anyone who trusts in a man and makes flesh his arm and goes into, uh, into air with that person and their heart departs away from the Lord. Jesus Christ, in, in Matthew 23, Jesus clearly said that he was going to send his, his messengers. In, verse 20, uh, in, in Matthew 23, reading out of the RSV Bible, Verse 34 says, Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, some you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. What Jesus is, Jesus oh, is sending out his messengers, and they are filled with his Holy Spirit, and they are messengers to tell the people what is going to come, and, and instructors and teachers, so that the people can be edified through the word of, of, of God. He's God has been doing that since Adam. He sent out his prophets in all the ages, all the generations. His word has always been on and in the earth. Now in Mark 13, in Mark 13, it says here, in verse 34, in verse 32 says, but of that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. So Jesus has left everyone as individuals with work to do, as individuals, you see. The body of Christ consists of people doing unique ministry with Jesus Christ. G Jesus has his word, and his word speaks through many people in, very, in various amounts. And as his consecrated followers, we, we are built up with spiritual discernment to discern what is of the Holy Spirit and what is not of the Holy Spirit. All those spirits are to be taken in prayer. The Bible says to test all the spirits and ask Jesus for the truth and how those apply to our lives. And ask Jesus. And, and He will give us the direction and the counsel on how, how, to, how, to, um, uh, how that applies in our lives and what we are to do. You see, so when God says do not trust in a man, He's also speaking regarding the flesh of a man. And so we can be trusting in a man, we can be walking after the ways of a man, and we can be also walking in air if we're trying to uh, idolize a man. Our idol has to be Jesus Christ himself. And John 6.45 says that they will all be taught of Jesus Christ. So men make mistakes, we all make mistakes, says the Bible. Uh, we are all uh, weak and fallible. In, in the state that we live in. However, Jesus, when we put all our trust in Jesus, and the proverb says that as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens a man. So God wants to produce the creation to produce on our own. That's in Matthew 4, uh, 28. So we are to build each other up and help each other as true ministers of Jesus Christ on the foundation of love. Uh, even the greatest elect, such as Paul, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, I think it was 1, or 1 Corinthians 1, 1, he said to, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he said, imitate me as I am of Christ. What Paul is speaking regarding is to imitate the way he does his office with Jesus, his work ethic. Paul always puts put Jesus Christ first in everything he did. He was always in prayer, and he was consecrated. And he finished, he ran and finished the race. So he's saying, be as I am. But he's not saying to follow him and to do everything he does. 
he's saying that, uh, uh, you said, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you except for a few people because then you might, you know, want to uh, idolize me. So that's, the, that's what Jesus is saying through his people, saying, yes, we need to listen to the, uh, to the elect of Jesus. We get together to edify each other. That's what the church was all about. When the church first began and Paul set up the churches, they were to go out and minister and come back and get together and to share everything that Jesus Christ is doing, to edify each other. The Bible says that when we're gathered together and one person is speaking, two people are prophesying, they're speaking together, the first person has to be silent and let the other people speak, let the other one speak because they have a message of Jesus Christ to edify the entire body of believers. So this is how we are to conduct ourselves and this is how we are to, to understand. This is the, the proper context uh, in when when Jesus said, "Do not trust in a man," you see, uh, it, to that extent, uh, we are to help each other and build each other up, and we are to have patience with each other and minister uh, in love with Jesus Christ. We are also to challenge each other, and and we are to work out our fear and trembling, uh, our salvation with fear and trembling with each other. Also, there's there's many different aspects. Of, of how we are to, to interact together. The, the, the end of that road is Jesus Christ. He's the one, when we are through gathering, that we go into prayer and ask Jesus uh, that, you know, the person said this, and, and, and I acted, and, and the way we acted towards a certain person, uh, all the exchanges that were going on, where we ask Jesus to show us truth, and he does. He shows us the truth. And this happened to me today also at a gathering. And we were speaking regarding a pre-tribulation rapture. And the person believes in a pre-tribulation rapture, and, and, and I do not. Uh, I, I believe that the church is going through. I believe that a pre-tribulation rapture is, is very unbiblical, and there is no proof in the Bible. And God could have done that. He could have done that. Uh, however, the, the scriptures are clear uh, that uh, God knew, knows the end from the beginning. And the doctrine is to expect, the church must be expectant of going through the Great Tribulation. However, this is, was one of the verses, and the Holy Spirit revealed to me after the gathering, when I, when I came home and I prayed regarding that, um, uh, the scripture reading that we did, in Revelation 20, verse 4, it says, Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom judgment was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony to Jesus and for the word of God, and who had not worshipped the beast or its image, and had not received its mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So this speaks, so he, this was, the person is saying that there's two different groups of people. So we have the ones that were raptured, and they were seven years with Jesus, and then they came back, and then the ones that were beheaded were also raptured. The Holy Spirit put in my, my heart, said, go to Matthew 27, 50 to 53, and, and the person did not understand this verse. So I have to explain this verse, how there was a resurrection, and how the resurrected saints, the ones that were resurrected, were King David. And King David said that, I know that you will not let my soul see decay. And also Samuel and, and Noah and, and Adam, and they were all resurrected there. And I explained to him the ministry of Jesus Christ when he went into the pit of hell and ministered there. And then he did not, they, the person did not accept that either. Uh, in, in, in Matthew 27... 51 to 53 says here and behold the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split and the tombs were also open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised you see and cometh coming out of the tombs after his resurrection they went out in the holy city and appeared to many this is the resurrection jesus was resurrected and then he led captives on his train and and and, and gave gifts to men these were the ones that jesus preached to on the second day, and then the third day that he was there, this is the resurrection, when they were resurrected. And this is all the saints. Also John the Baptist, because John the Baptist was, was murdered uh, 
he was beheaded, he died, he was killed in the during the bridging of the first and second covenant, not during the second covenant. So he's he was also risen ex very quickly, you see, and that's very edifying. And these are the people the Holy Spirit revealed to me after I was in prayer. I got home, and he revealed to me that this who the people are are the ones in. These are the ones in Revelation 20, verse 4. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those who, to whom judgment was committed. See, and also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony to Jesus Christ for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or its image, and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. So they were out of Egypt. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The marriage supper of the Lamb, this is the first fruits. So the first fruits were resurrected. You see, they're resurrected and they go into glory to meet the brethren, the, the cloud of brethren that were resurrected with Jesus Christ. That's exactly what this means. This is very edifying. And you see how this is perfect with the elders uh, that are at, in the throne room of God in, 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 the, in Revelation. So see, this is, that's how things are done. We, we gather, we sit, we discuss, and there's a lot of emotions involved. At the end, we take that in prayer, and we ask Jesus, and we seek Jesus with a humble heart, a contrite spirit, in trembling and in fear, because the Holy Spirit is there in the gathering, and He's leading us. I pray, I pray that you're edified, and I pray that, that um, we'll just, just take it all to prayer in Jesus, and just be at peace with each other. Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen and amen.